Hello, George Crum here, and today we're going to talk about another tackle tip for you. Um, and what I'm going to explain to you is how to make mono spinners, sometimes called soft spinners, basically a spinner on monofilament or fluorocarbon line like these that you see here. I use these spinners a lot when I'm fishing with flashers that rotate 360 degrees like Pro Trolls, Short Bus Super Series, and I'll use these in salt water, sometimes in brackish water for both king salmon and silver salmon. The beauty of these spinners are you can vary them for different species and different applications. Sometimes I'm fishing the spinner all by itself. Sometimes, especially in the lower 48, I'll fish them with coon shrimp or prawns. Other times I might be fishing them with small plug cut herring or a whole herring. Uh, you can vary the hook size, the blade size to a certain extent to meet whatever application you're trying to address. To make these spinners, there are a number of things you need. You'll need hooks of the appropriate size that you're gonna use. I'm going to use Marudo size two aught hooks today for these spinners. If you wanna use trailers of some sort, you don't have to, but you certainly can. Small diameter fluorescent colored tubing like this works quite well, and you can see it on some of these spinners that I have here. Another option, and I do this a lot when I'm fishing salt water or brackish water, is to put a hoochie on the back of the spinner like these, a very small hoochie. Uh, other things that you'll need, size six millimeter beads in the colors of your choice, could be any colors. And then some smaller beads. I like size four millimeter beads in either chartreuse or, or orange, depending on what I'm trying to do. Last but not least, for most of the spinners that you see in front of me here, you'll need some sort of clevis. There are a lot of them out there. I like the plastic ones, which allow you to quickly change blade colors if you want. And you'll see over here, I've got several different fishing leaderboards with spinner blades stuck in them, which, you know, it's a good way to keep your blades from getting all chipped up. Anyway, with these clevises, you can quickly change out colors to whatever you think is working. If you get a hot tip from a buddy or something like that, it's, it's easy to make the change. Last but not least, you'll need some leader material, and I like fluorocarbon leader for these. I've got several different brands right here, ranging from 25 pound tests up to 40 pound tests. You could even tie these on 50 pound tests. The fish are just aren't that leader shy, especially when you're using a big 11 inch flasher and it's jerking that spinner around behind the flasher. One thing I'll mention about that, these spinner blades that you see here, they're not big. These are size 3.5 spinner blades. I rarely use spinners bigger than this when I'm using Pro, Pro Troll type flashers. The reason for the small spinner blade is if you go too big, the flasher isn't able to jerk the spinner around behind it and you lose some of the attraction that you get from this sort of presentation. In addition to using metal blades, you could or go using the plastic clevises and instead use a miler blade like what you could see here. These blades that you see on these spinners are called wild wings. Uh, Max smile blades are an example of miler blades or short, short bus flashers bling wings are another example. All of these work well on mono spinners or soft spinners. The last thing that you'll need at the end of your leader is a dual lock snap of the appropriate size. These happen to be size four duo locks. Okay, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and tie one up real quick. All right, when I'm gonna fish these spinners behind a pro troll, which is what I'm doing with them pretty much 100% of the time, I don't want a really long leader. But when I cut my leader material, I have to cut it long enough to account for two egg loop knots, plus some sort of uh, knot to my dual lock snap. I usually use a trilene knot uh, for these particular spinners. So what I end up cutting usually is about 42 inches of line. When I'm done tying this thing up, I'll have somewhere between 28 and 30 inches or so of usable line after I've tied it onto, you know, just before I tie it onto the dual lock, and I'll adjust it because when I fish these spinners behind a Pro Troll, I'm usually using a leader length of 24 to about 30 inches, somewhere in there. If you, if you tried to pin me down and told me I have to pick a number, I'd probably pick 26 inches.
I've really become a fan of these Maruto hooks lately because they are super sharp. They're really sharp. And of course they have this sickle bend similar to the Gamakatsu Big River Bait Hook which tends to help keep fish hooked a little bit better than a continuous round bend which most octopus hooks have. And when I'm tying this on 25 pound test line the forward portion of my egg loop knot I typically wrap 10 times. Then when I'm doing the back half of the egg loop knot I usually go half as many times, so five. I don't go less than half as many times. Sometimes I'll go one more, sometimes I'll go six back here. There are lots of ways to do this. You can see that I'm tying it upside down. Uh, for me that's the easiest way. I can do it about three or four different ways. I've tied so many of these, I can do them in the dark with my eyes closed. Make sure that you get the knot pulled nice and tight. Trim off your tag end. Time to tie the second hook. One of the beauties of the mono spinner rig is that you can vary the spacing between your two hooks. For instance, if I'm going to use a plug cut herring with a small spinner, I'm probably going to stretch these hooks out a little bit farther trying to match the size of the herring that I'm using. I would probably also use bigger hooks than this if I was using herring. If I'm going to use a prawn spinner or something like that like they do down in the Columbia River, I would bring these hooks closer together and I'd use hooks about this size which are two aughts. So there's a lot of variation that you can do. One thing I do try to do and it's difficult to do perfectly is I try to get these hooks so that the points are opposing. I don't want them facing the same way. I want them opposing. And this is especially important if you're going to use a coon shrimp or a prawn. And if I had one to bait, I would show you why that is. But opposing, that way, no matter which way the fish happens to strike the lure from, chances are you're going to get them with one of those hooks. I always lubricate the line even when I'm tying a, an egg loop knot like this because I want to make sure that I don't weaken it when I tighten it. How do we do? Not perfect, but the hooks are pretty much opposing and that's, that's kind of what you're looking for. Okay, next we have to assemble the rest of the components onto this. And for this particular spinner, I'm going to use no tubing and no hoochies, although depending on where I was fishing, I would. And I'm gonna use orange beads. So I'll put the green beads aside, grab my six millimeter beads, and I'm going to put two of these on. All we're really doing is creating a little spot of color back there in front of your hooks, which allows also some spacing so your spinner blade can turn without hitting the hook points. And You'll see that we've got two sizes of beads. These are both six millimeter, but now I'm gonna put on a four millimeter bead. And the reason for that is your plastic clevis that we use on mono spinners like this will spin a little bit better against a four millimeter bead than it will against the six millimeter bead. I don't have my glasses on, but I guessed good. So here's where we're at so far two six millimeter beads and a four millimeter bead. Next, because we're not putting any other attractors on, I'm gonna place one of these clevises on and they make these clevises, as far as I know, in both 
black and white. Those are the only colors that I've seen. Does it matter? I always thought the white ones were kind of goofy looking, but the fish really don't seem to care. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see what the clevis looks like before I put a blade on it. Again, this allows you to quickly change blade colors if you like. So I'm gonna put a blade on this so, just so that you can kind of see what it looks like. I'll pick one of my favorites. Oh, let's go with the copper, copper Mexican hat, very popular color for these types of spinners. Now when I tie these up, you, you see this is what it looks like. It doesn't look like much. And you would think, what self-respecting salmon is gonna bite that thing? But they will, they'll bite it. Even with just those couple beads on it and a blade, they'll bite that thing. When I tie these up in advance of fishing, let's say I'm gonna to go to Seward and I'm gonna troll at the, um, the, the uh, head of Res Resurrection Bay when silver start getting a little bit mature and they're ganging up outside of town. I'll tie a bunch of these up in advance and I'll usually put them on a leaderboard like this fishing leaderboard or this one, a bigger one, without blades on them. And the reason is, I don't know for sure what color I'm gonna be using until I get there. So I'll, I'll, I'll rig them up like this with no blades on them. I'll bring my blades with me, lots to choose from. And when I'm on the water, I'll make my selections. All right, getting back to the spinner we just tied. There it is. Here's my leader. You can see it's considerably shorter than it was when we started. And I don't have my tape out here right now, but for demonstration purposes, I can tell you right now, that's, that's probably about 29 inches. I always end my spinners with a duo lock snap. And the reason is I don't like to waste time tying knots on the water. If your hands are wet and cold, you tend to not do a very good job. And if the bite is on, you're in a hurry and you might screw your knot up. So I tend to tie mine up in advance. And if you look at all these leaders on this particular little board, you can see that they've all already got duo locks on them. So that when I need to put one on, all I gotta do is snap the duo lock to the end of the flasher. I like to try lean knot again for this particular deal. I know some very good fishermen who use a whole bunch of different kinds of knots. What you need to do is figure out what leader material you like and then figure out which knot works well for you with that leader material. Some of them Some leader materials will tie a, a tri lean knot really well, but not, not so much something like a San Diego jam. Some materials might tie a regular improved clinch knot well, but not the tri lean knot. So it's up to you to figure out which knot works best for you. And you need to be able to tie it so that you don't burn the, en burn the end of the line just in front of the knot. And that looks pretty good right there. It's gonna work. So once I have this tied up, trim the tag end off the knot and I'll simply place it on a leaderboard. Again, normally I wouldn't put a spinner blade on just yet. I would uh, wrap it up on the leaderboard without one, but since I already put one on there, I'll just leave it on. Fishing leaderboards work really good for tying a bunch of rigs up in advance, whether it's sim simple egg leaders or mooching leaders or whatever may be the case. So there you have it, the new spinners on the end. So again, monofilament spinners, sometimes called soft spinners. They're easy to make, they're very versatile. We make these to fish behind pro troll type flashers. You can fish them off of a downrigger or you can fish them off a slider with lead weight. Silver salmon, king salmon, I've caught chum salmon and lots of pink salmon on these things as well. Give them a try next time we're fishing out of sewers for silvers. Um, you could even try these and cook in that deep creek area for kings and you'd probably have some success. George Crum here, Fish Alaska Magazine. Today we're gonna to talk about 360 flasher rigging. And I don't mean the entire setup like you see on this rod, I mean specifically the flasher itself. Now this, is a typical 360 flasher. It's a Pro Troll Pro Chip 11 flasher and it's rigged the way they were intended to be rigged from the factory. The problem with this flasher is 
that although this kicker fin provides traction in the water that really makes the flasher work well at low speeds and it jerks the bait around well, it also creates a tremendous amount of drag in the water, especially when the fish is going sideways and trying to drag the flasher sideways too. So we lose a lot of fish with this technique. We get a lot of bites. It's really effective for getting bites, but we lose a lot of fish. And I like to tell people if they're landing 60% of their fish, they're doing really good. These next three rods are all rigged with attempts to minimize that flasher drag so that you might land more fish. And the first one I'll talk about is the Hawken 360 flasher breakaway system. Here it is. You can see the black metal wire, it's titanium. It's got a snap that attaches to the top end of the flasher. And then you replace the swivel on the bottom of the flasher with what you see right here. Okay, and what this is, is a magnetic breakaway system. When a fish bites and pulls on the line, the flasher breaks away. And then when that fish is traveling sideways through the water, this flasher isn't exerting all that drag on the, on the line anymore. So you end up landing a larger percentage of the fish that you hook. The Simon system has proven to be effective. Right now, it's my favorite release mechanism on the market. Um, I do like the homemade ones, but hey, you gotta make the homemade ones, and this one works pretty well. It's pretty easy to use. The next one I'll cover is the homemade one. And this is what we did before commercially available flasher release systems were on the market. And for this one, you can see that we've got this little flasher release line. It's tied of heavy monofilament filament with a dual lock snap on one end and a small but high quality barrel swivel on the other end. You'll notice that there's a little pigtail of telephone wire wrapped into the back end of the flasher and the hardware that originally came on the flasher has been removed. Now, things about this, this piece of line here needs to be between about 11 and a half and 11 three quarters inches. Some people make it 12 but certainly no longer than 12, no shorter than 11 and a half. And when a fish bites this flasher, as soon as he starts shaking his head, the pigtail straightens out, the flasher disconnects, and just like the Simon release mechanism, you fight the fish with a lot less flasher drag, better chance of landing the fish. The next means to try to reduce flasher drag that I'll talk about is the Brad's Killer Fishing Gear Evolution 360 flasher. Now this one's got a couple of things going for it. First of all, it has a built-in release. So when you buy the flasher, the release comes with it. The release is this bungee mechanism that you see. And it's simply a little plastic clip. It clips on to a specific location on the flasher. And it, you know, fish bites, it comes undone. And you have the added benefit of this bungee, which can help keep tension on the line when the fish is doing things that are so fast you can't keep up with with the reel. So that's a big plus. Next, up here in the top end, there are actually three holes drilled. And these allow you to fine tune the speed of rotation that the flasher uh, is going. So if you're trolling really slowly, you'll want to put, put it in this hole that I'm pointing at right here. It'll make the flasher spin faster at slow speeds. The middle one is, a, I'll call it medium speed. And this one up here is for when you're trolling the fastest, it makes the flasher spin at the slowest speed. So the Brad's, Brad's 360 Evolution Flasher has a lot of things going for it. I've only uh, used it once. I got one bite, it was a king salmon. I did land that salmon, so right now its landing percentage is 1,000%, it's batting 1,000. Uh, time will tell uh, how that holds up as we hook more fish on these things, but I'm, I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing with this particular flasher. So the biggest thing with 360 flashers is we lose a lot of fish. There are some things that you can do to try to minimize the number of fish that you lose, and you do that by minimizing flasher drag with one of the three release systems that I just showed you. If you try one of these, any of these, they all work, you'll probably land more fish. Now with that being said, some of the best anglers I know prefer to fish without a release, but they're also very good anglers and very good at fighting fish, so their landing percentage doesn't really suffer. For the rest of us average Joes out there, the release system is probably the way to go.